Welcome to episode 17, Word of Mouth. How important is word of mouth? What we hear about word of mouth is always from the customer's perspective. So customer one tells customer two and so on and so forth and you know the rest of that story and that's really important, we know that. But we've done some statistics and we've gathered some information from 273 mystery shoppers to find out how important word of mouth or how I like to look at it, how important recommendations are in the purchase process. See, when you're, when you're choosing a product, there are actually three ways you can, you can decide to buy it. Number one, it's off a recommendation from a friend. Number two, it's recommendation from the staff member. Or number three, it could be that it's just something that, was recommend, that you've used before. It turns out that the recommendation from a friend is as equally important as the other two. Or look at another way, recommendation by staff members is as equally important as the recommendation by a friend or as something you've used before. Now the exact stats are recommended by staff is selected 31% of the time by our shoppers, recommended by a friend 33% will go with that option and having used it before 36%. They're basically a third, a third, a third. People will look at each of those equally in terms of importance in the purchase process. Hold that thought for a second. Now let's have a look at what actually gives, makes the decision to buy something. So imagine you're buying a barbecue and you've, you've got a few things on offer for you. You've got this whole line, these lines of barbecues all over the place and you're wondering, God, which one do I buy? Now, once you're presented with that situation, there are some other factors that come into play. Now, number one, was it recommended by the staff member? Number two, what was the brightest and most professional looking display? Number three, which was cheaper? And number four, which was more expensive? Which of those factors drives the purchase decision? It turns out that the most expensive one, now some people do say yes, um, higher prices are at a barometer to quality, I understand that, but people only chose the one that was 10% more expensive 1% of the time. Only 1% of the people actually polled chose that option. The option of just going for the cheapest by 10%, well that was only selected 16% of the time. So yes, I know we all like a bargain, but when you're presented with all these choices, the cheapest was only chosen 16% of the time. The most professional looking and brightest display, well that one is chosen 7% of the time. Not as important as you would imagine it to be. Now the big daddy of all of these is recommendation by a staff member. If something was recommended by a staff member and the staff member explained why it's, it's the choice for you, then that's chosen 76% of the time as the defining factor in making the purchase decision. So 76% of the time, the staff recommendation is going to be the thing that drives the purchase. Now, where do all the stores spend their time? Where do they spend all their efforts? They spend their time on all the product displays, they spend their time on nice, neat and tidy displays, they spend their time on figuring out the little process, the little pricing mechanisms, and yet this whole staff recommendation gets left behind. People want to buy, and they want to buy from someone who knows what they're talking about. So if you're going in to buy a barbecue or a car or whatever else, you're going to listen to the salesperson who sounds like they know what they're talking about. It's a critically important part of retailing that we just tend to underestimate and forget.